NVIDIA learns a lesson from AMD, one it's learned in the past and somehow forgets every single time. Microsoft wants to force you onto Windows 11 and Qualcomm decides it's the future of PCs. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Let me know what you're having for breakfast down below in the comments while we talk about a move that we've seen before. Typically, this is the scenario that we see between NVIDIA and AMD. NVIDIA launches a feature that they lock down to their ecosystem. AMD comes out with the exact same feature that they open up for everybody. NVIDIA goes, hey, your sucks. AMD is like, yeah, but everybody can use it. And then it, something stuff happens. And sometimes it goes, hey, AMD actually does have the better feature. We want to use that because it's free and open for everybody. To which NVIDIA goes, so is ours. Ours is open, free for everybody. Why are you using their stuff? Get away from AMD. They're disgusting, all right? And that is exactly what's happening with NVIDIA's upscaling SDK, known as NVIDIA image scaling, because it's now being made open source and available for multiple GPUs and being made to be better in that it upscales better and it runs faster than AMD's stupid FSR. Their words, not mine. So being updated to version 2.0 as of November 16th, with the SDK being available on GitHub for developers to integrate into their own games, NVIDIA themselves saying the cross-platform factor became much more important to many game developers, saying they love implementing DLSS, but what about those who don't have it? And now we offer a complete solution with DLSS and a special scaling solution for those who cannot run DLSS. So we have something for the rich people and you poor folk down there who can't afford an RTX GPU. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're still on a GTX 970 because there's the chip shortage. You should have thought about that before being poor. Really, this screams, hey, get off of AMD's FSR, which is a complete solution for people who can use whatever. Them also showing in a demo that Nvidia solution performs better than FSR 46 FPS with their image scaling versus FSR's 43, which is disgusting. And then in case you have DLSS, you're not a poor person. You can get 69 nice FPS. We've seen this before with NVIDIA's G-Sync being made available and that it can run FreeSync technology on NVIDIA cards as opposed to being locked down to just one. And finally, we're getting that when it comes to image upscaling solutions. What do you think of NVIDIA pulling this move? Want to hear from you down below in the comments, but not to be outdone with the free version, NVIDIA upscaling also. DLSS 2.3 now having better motion scaling when it comes to their applications. What am I trying to say? Words, motion vectors are better used so there's less ghosting in the image quality words that are trying to get out of my mouth when it comes to DLSS 2.3. And what's not supposed to be coming out of my mouth, but now will just dribble out in an unfortunate slew of words is that the RTX 2060 12 gigabyte is real and it's happening and it's coming out gigabyte submitting four different cards for the EEC filings, which is how we find out about a lot of cords that are actually inevitably going to be real based on Turing. It's gonna supposedly launch on December 7th is when we're supposed to be getting these cards. Which Tom's Hardware says it makes sense for Nvidia to release these because they're somehow unappealing to crypto miners, which I just don't understand. Saying Nvidia will use the TSMC 12 nanometer, which makes sense because that's what 2060s are on, which are in relatively low demand compared to its seven nanometer and five nanometer products. But that's not, if it's available, they're gonna buy it. Yeah, it only gets 33 mega hash per second, but at least it's available. If they're producing more of it, they're just gonna buy more of it. I don't understand how this matters to miners at all. If it's at an affordable price, which is the only way I think it makes sense for Nvidia to relaunch this is if it comes in at a price point of like 200, $250. Like this is now like the RX 580 card that's for sale forever, right? The RTX 2060 for 250 bucks. I would love that. That'd be, that'd be a great thing but I don't see that happening. And if it does happen at that great price, why wouldn't miners just buy that? Speaking of mining, let's talk about the crypto stonks update. Bitcoin uh, slowing down a little bit, decreased 7.5% over the last 24 hours to be below $60,000 for the first time in a while. You see, it's kind of cratering after a long time of being nearly its peak of $69,000, but also kind of where it's been just hovering over the last month. Ethereum also down 8% to be at 41.88. Dogecoin also decreasing roughly 10% to sit at 23 cents. Meme stonks 
I'm having a mixed day. GameStop, as of the time of filming, is down 0.75%, not quite close. I'm filming just before close, but it's at 207.79, and AMC down also very slightly to be at just under $42. Speaking of cryptocurrencies, Brave Browser is now integrating a wallet directly into the browser that you do not need an extension for. It will be called Brave Wallet. Good job on the naming scheme, guys. Do you use Brave Browser to actually watch content? We were one of like the signed up creators. The Brave Coin, basic attention token, whatever it's called, has always been uh, very next to useless for us. And like people clamored for us to sign up on Brave for ages. And when I did, like it was years ago at this point, and I've checked it like once a year. It's like we earned $10 a year from being signed up as a Brave creator. Do you use Brave? Let me know down below in the comments. And do you use one of the brand new MacBook Pros that has 120 hertz screen? Well, you know the web browser that comes included with Mac OS, Safari? Yeah, how it didn't support 120 hertz? Well, now it's getting a preview of 120 hertz support. Something like Apple being the one that has like integrated technology where everything's a cohesive ecosystem couldn't even update their freaking web browser to support 120 hertz support on their largest product launch in like a year. They just were like, are we supposed to? Is this how we're supposed to communicate with the software team on this? Is this supposed to be ready? And Razer might be ready to actually go private again. There's some rumorings and reportings that are going on that Razer might be buying itself out so that it can go back private instead of being a publicly traded company as it is on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange right now. There was a regulatory filing that this might happen for about four Hong Kong dollars per share, but it's not 100% determined whether or not Razer's gonna do it. They're not making official comments on it. They're just kind of doing all the prep work in order to make this happen. And whether or not that's gonna go down, we'll keep you updated on that and Windows wants you to be updated to Windows 11, okay? You especially if you're trying to run ARM, okay? You wanna be like one of those fancy Mac boys who's supposed to get some sort of emulation for the previous processing on X64. You want that, okay? You better pony up and go on Windows 11 because X64 emulation on ARM only for Windows 11 people, okay? That feature set is reserved exclusively for people who use the inferior new operating system, okay? You thought you could get away with sticking in the previous Microsoft Windows 10 because you wanted better feature support? No, we remove it from you. You don't get it anymore. Go to Windows 11 or nothing else. In case you can't tell, Brett's a little salty about the forced migration to Windows 11. I think Windows 11 is actually an inferior operating system for a lot of daily tasks that I use, and I will not switch over until I'm absolutely forced to. And I'm not the type of person who doesn't like to hop on the new technology. Like Windows 7, sign me up day one. Windows 8, unfortunately, sign me up day one. Windows Vista, sign me up day one. Windows 10, sign me up update one windows 11 what are you doing man i'll try you out but oh my goodness you need to get yourself together before i even consider dailying you my goodness Microsoft also coming out and reporting that Windows 10 is going to get an annual update model just like Windows 11 instead of having these semi-annual releases that they've been having like 2H1 or 2H2. It's just going to be once a year like Windows 11 is until they retire it in 2025, which I can tell you right now, based on my proclivity to not update to Windows 11, Windows 10 is not dying until at least 2030. Oh. Not, no chance. If they're updating it once a year, I'm sticking with it. They need to retool and overhaul Windows 11 before they get Brett on board. Am I being too harsh with Windows 11? I don't want to hear your opinions down below, but one of the features that made me not want to upgrade to Windows 11, the fact that they got rid of the blue screen of death and replaced it with a black screen, well, that's now been changed with a change log saying we changed the screen color to blue when a device stops working or stop error occurs as in previous versions of Windows. Just having the screen go pitch black is just like, it's so violating. It's so like, you screwed up your PC and I messed up my cup. Like, it's just too aggressive. Blue is very calming, just like, yes, we know you screwed up, but it's gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be okay. We're here to soothe you in your stupidity. Don't worry, Windows 11. We messed up, here you go. Here's some nice soothing blue for you. But in case you're Intel or AMD, you might not be soothed by the fact that you've got a couple of competitions gunning for your job. You got Apple over here taking you down with M1 technology, remarkably efficient, really good at what it does. Qualcomm now coming out and saying, hey, we're gonna be the next generation PC processor, okay? Especially now that we've acquired Nuvia, who's run by former Apple engineers, who's actually being sued by Apple. But you know, that's neither here nor there. Nuvia 
Nvidia going to be the CPU design that's going to take on Qualcomm to the next level to be the next generation CPU processor, saying that it's designed to set the performance benchmark for Windows PC and leadership and sustained performance and battery life and will be extended to mobile, automotive and data center opportunistically. All right, and devices should be launching sometime in 2023. Qualcomm saying that they are the M series competitive solution for the PC, okay? High power efficiency, high performance for what you're getting. Intel, AMD, watch it back. You think you got the throne just because you're the top dog in gaming? You know how small the gaming sector is not on console? Very small, all right? Qualcomm's coming for your job. They can't do very much when it comes to wearables and Snapdragon wear, but boy, how do you better believe they're gonna be able to revolutionize the PC industry? What do you think of Qualcomm being the next generation of CPUs on Windows? I wanna hear from your thoughts down below on the comments, your thoughts, all right? I don't wanna hear your fingers clickety clacking away. I wanna hear your thoughts in my brain. Beam them directly to me, Scotty. And before this episode gets any weirder, and I go on further tangents of just not saying anything correct, I'm gonna end this episode of Hot News. I'll see you tomorrow for breakfast, my friends, while we discuss the tech news. Cheerios, adioso, goodbye. Thank you.